Okay, hello. Hello, everybody. My name is Jorma Jakkola. I'm from Nokia. I'm from Nokia Airframe Data Center Solution. I'm from the product management part of that. So I'm happy he to be here to tell you about our experiences on, on what we have faced when we have been dealing with various hardware management projects and, and, and components in our solution and with our other solutions as, as well. So I would be first cover the background on, on this where we came and how, how we started to, to ramp up our, our data center products and, and what kind of targets we, we put to that, that work. Then a few words about the solution alternatives that we, we were thinking about while building up, up the solution and, and finding out the sort of the best, best alternatives. And then specifically focusing on, on this particular topic on, on how we manage the hardware components and touching some of the interface related issues, issues there. And after that, I would like to propose some candidates where we as a community could, could improve this uh, management of, of various hardware elements. And at the end, then coming, wrapping up, up the, the topic. So yeah, as uh, Nokia, we have been working with various IT hardwares for a very long time. Uh, primarily the IT hardwares have been from, from the large IT suppliers, well-known suppliers, HP's, Dell's and, and like. But a um, few, few years ago, we identified a um, situation that we could actually start to ramp up also our own, own product portfolio in this, in this area. And, and from the experience from the past with this, all these, all these suppliers of ours, in, in our projects internal to Nokia with our customers and, and when we are supporting our software on top of the, the IT hardware, we have always had some challenges and also solutions on how we, how we manage the hardware. And um, in, in this case, the, the focus is, we, in, in our airframe portfolio, we have mainly two, two lines of, of products. We have this sort of what, we, what would be called sort of traditional uh, rack mount hardware portfolio, including servers, switches, storages, power supplies, all, all the necessary components that need to, you need, need to put up a, a solution. And the same with this OCP form factor. And uh, uh, for that, we, we have few products in the pipeline at the moment and more, more to come. And as, as part of that, we also um, uh, source, source that uh, from our partners, ODM suppliers. So, so not, not everything is done by ourselves, but we have very many partners in, in this area. And they are coming from a bit of a different angle. So that, that uh, also brings up additional challenges here. And then in some cases, we need to adapt in customer cases, we need to adapt to some other elements as well, which would be still coming from, from other suppliers. So there are lots of variants in our portfolio, but also in, in the customer cases when we need to build up the solutions. And once we started to build up the, our solution, the, the hardware itself needs to have a best, best fit for uh, most computing needs. So Commercial off-the-shelf IT hardware is, is very well fit to, the, to our customers as, as well, but we didn't want to overload the hardware with all, all these components, but uh, to give the best possible combination. So kind of like what we like to call this more like a vanity-free free type of hardware. So only the necessary is included there. So that's for the hardware in, in a sense. Also, we, as Nokia, we want to be very open and have an open APIs, support open APIs, um, so that it can be flexible, it can be adapted to various uh, environments, various use cases, and, and, and so forth. Of course, naturally, one, one big factor is, is the cost efficiency of our solution. The hardware itself 
needs to be cost cost friendly capex capex wise it's very important not to pay any extra for for non usable features but also opex wise it has to be easy to operate it has to be easy to manage that way you can cut down the cost also when you automate the operations then you can really reduce your opex you can omit uh, sort of an, uh, manual work in, in installing installing the hardware naturally you need some some work when installing hardware but uh, you would also <laughs> save time when you when you automate the rest of the process and and then also through automation you can make sure that you omit this as well while you're omitting the manual manual work you can also omit the human errors that are attached to those manual operations and hence you can also improve the quality so when we when we were thinking about our hardware management solution then we we had several alternatives to to work work from and naturally one one primary alternative was was to to source the hardware management from the component suppliers from the ODM component suppliers not all of them would have this but some did and and we have been also using that but um, when when our variety of our products would increase and it's been has been increasing we would then have several products from different vendors in our hands and that would really bring a big uh, challenge in, in integrating those and also would bring really the mixed user experience. Then we started to look at this sort of uh, non-hardware supplied, supplier supplied softwares for hardware management and we found few pretty good. Some were mainly for the office IT management environment and not that suitable for, for our data center management and that's why we didn't find the right one from, from that angle either. So then we, we looked at the, the open source solutions for, for this purpose and there, there we found, as, as we, we all know, many tools and, and options that could be used for managing hardware. So um, for example, there are these domains that have several open source projects. For example, monitoring, we have Nagios, Zabbix and similar products that are very very good in, in this in this manner for inventories we have lots of different databases that can be used for that purpose but but when thinking about the full data center management feature set th there was none with this sort of complete coverage of of the needed use cases so hence we set up to to develop our own solution by utilizing naturally of, of various these, these open source components. And one, one particular topic of that uh, that I want to touch in, in this presentation is the actual interface of how we interface with the hardware. And, and we, we selected Ironic. We, we were looking for several comp uh, elements how we would and should interface to the hardware, whether it's a server switch, uh, power supply, or uh, storage, whatever is needed. Uh, and um, we came to that conclusion that Ironic would be best fit to our needs. Naturally, we had all already experience inside Nokia on, on this when, when we have had this OpenStack uh, projects ongoing for quite some time. And Ironic naturally brings this, some, some of the key requirements fulfills those like the hardware agnostic design so it can be easily, at least in principle easily, <coughs> sorry, integrated with different hardwares and it also has a large community support. But it's, it's not enough and I guess this picture on, on the right hand side explains that a bit. So as you can see the, on the, on the Left hand side, we have this sort of the basic ironic service here, and it's mainly focused on, on the compute and storage node 
management and storage is being kind of on compute nodes with large disks. Uh, in addition to that, we had to <coughs> add configuration control functionalities, uh, which would either use Ironic and Ironic services or then access directly to the, to the hardware. And then also the sort of event and KPI collection of, of the, the measurements. And in between here we have sort of a quite big variety of different interfaces, what has to be supported when accessing different variants of, of the hardware. IPMI being the one, one well-known uh, protocol, SNMP being used, then there are the HEP, TFTP network pro protocols, PIXIs, and, and those. And then for some cases also OEM specific SSH shell scripts and, and such. But most of these would still have this sort of vendor specific attributes. That's something that we, we see quite a big challenge that we should avoid, avoid these vendor specific parts. And uh, that's also one big uh, well-known shortcoming of IPMI that even though IPMI is standard, then you still have quite many OEM parameters there that you really need to support in order to have good, good solution for your data center. So we started to look up the other alternatives and, and there seems to be projects available, emerging, maybe not there yet. Um, the sort of most prominent candidates being, being Redfish on, on defining the uh, interface itself and the open BMC as such is, is a, a good uh, promising solution for, for managing the hardware. But with the open BMC API, we do have a challenge in, in that sense that it really doesn't define the, the API and the content of the API. It, all, all, it depends on the BMC implementation itself. So it, it could also then become a sort of a vendor specific API in, in reality that we would need to add up to. So we see that the Redfish has, has a good basis to evolve to such common interface that we could utilize here. So not, not just us as Nokia, but the community itself. So if we use Redfish here to access all these different uh, components, we could build up common solutions also on top of that interface. But as, as, as we were looking at the Redfish then in more detail, um, we see that it, it's not yet there. So in, in, um, in our thinking, we should dig deeper in into that definition of how, how we really use the Redfish and how, how the each parameter is, is read, how it's interpreted, so that everybody has the same view, view on, on the content, actual content of, of that uh, sort of an, a data element, if, if you like, from, from that API. So there is already activities ongoing in this Redfish. There's an OCP mockup for Redfish, and uh, it's a good start but uh, it's not there yet. So we should actually define that in more, de in more depth. So, so we would all know how to read the hardware through that common. So if you like, uh, we could call it OCP Redfish Reference API and uh, use that to access the hardware. So then it should, we should be able to harmonize the interface, how we, how we really manage the hardware. So that could enable the hardware suppliers to support uh, the common API, then it could be used sort of an, uh, uh, in, in many places and having this sort of a separation between uh, management systems and actual hardware, hardware suppliers, uh, bringing the openness to these systems. Without this sort of a commonly agreed API, there's always going to be this sort of vendor specific attributes and and some sort of a lock-in lock into that. 
But as said, we, we should define concrete common interpretation on how to use the interface. We need to define in more detail how, how um, we interpret the, the interface so that then it enables as hard hardware suppliers and then also the hardware management suppliers separately or commonly to use the same interface. And I think also that the open BMC would then be able to support the same API, at least with some, some adaptation. Yeah, that's, that was basically it what I, we had. So we see that the, the vendor specific hardware management interface, it profi prohibits these generic solutions that, that we as an OCP community should drive forward. And, and the existing activities are going in the right direction, but maybe we have not yet pushed, pushed hard enough for that. So we should work more, more on that, and, and Nokia is, is, is willing to, to go for that direction if, if you others see also support in, in that and, and feel that this is the right way, way to go forward. So our proposal is that we would define a, a concrete common interpretation on how to use the latest hardware management interface. And our proposal is to use Redfish as a basis for that. So then that it would enable us as a hardware supplier and, and us as a hardware management supplier to, to uh, support the common interface and have the, really the openness between these, these components and management systems. And that's uh, what I would like to now hear, hear your comments on how you see this. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have time for questions? Howdy. Uh, Brian Zonstecker, Power Rocks. Hi. Uh, so what I'm curious about in, in your, you know, desire proposal for this common hardware management specification, for lack yes. of a better term, yeah. What what features? I'm just curious, since you're coming from from Nokia, right? Yeah. What 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 features of, of that are are, let's say, more interesting to your type of telco implementation aside from you know generic server and DCIM type of features? And I don't think that they are that much different. I guess everybody wants to see how healthy your hardware is. Is it running okay? What are the temperatures? What is the CPU utilization? Any alerts, alarms going up in, in, the, in the hardware? So all, all the basics. It just then depends on how sensitive you set the sort of on how you monitor that and, and thresholds and things like that, depending on, on, on the sort of on the application requirements and use cases needed on top of that. So none of these metrics should be, you know, more interesting to, let's say, optimizing for, <clears throat> um, you know, uh, peak cell user workloads or anything like that, that are, there's nothing unique to that application, as opposed to any other generic uh, running, running Facebook or, 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 or a, yeah, or I guess a banking it's, it's, server or whatever? Yeah, in, in that sense, you mean that how many sort of an, different sensors we want to monitor in the hardware and that type of thing. Yeah, that might be, might be, might be the case that there we may see some, some differences in, in the needs. But I think in general, you would, we could define the, the sort of a common set of sensors that is needed and everybody sees as, as required coming from the hardware, for example. That, that, that could be one, one set that we could work on. I know that some hardware vendors provide hundred of sensor data coming from a single unit and then that might be not necessary in, in all the cases. Yeah, indeed, so maybe 10, 20 might be in the right ballpark in, in, in this type of cases. Yeah. Anyone else? I apologize, you may have already addressed this. Brian Messer from LightOn. The, um, you know, we, we deal a lot with power systems, racks, uh, s setting up the whole configuration. Right. There's a lot of concern, or a lot of interest on my part with my engineering team to drive them towards, or to drive us towards an open standard for communication. Right. Uh, information sharing, so we talk about uh, 
inside the rack sensor points, inside the system sensor points in terms of power, inside the server, inside the JBODs, and so forth. Yes. It's abstracted up a layer to the uh, API, to the actual software interface, and how all of these sensors tie together. Have you, did you address that earlier, or uh, what's your thoughts along those lines? As far as, you know, are you thinking in terms of, is, is Nokia thinking in terms of a REST interface or a RESTful interface for your communication of all of these different sensors, all of this different information for yeah, your the, maintenance network and so forth? Well, the Redfish is extendable. It has quite already yeah. defined quite... So there's Redfish, quite, there's OpenVMC, uh, there's... Yeah, uh, yeah. So we, we, can, we have already numerous. quite big, uh, good structure, flexible structure inside the Redfish, for example, for okay. support many... Many nodes. I'm not sure exactly how much it is currently defined to support its own power infrastructure. Yeah, and unfortunately, that's, that's right probably now, yeah, the Redfish doesn't seem yeah, to address. Yeah, yeah. It hasn't taken on that. And so when yeah. we go into the rack management of, you know, even uh, access entry alarms, if you've got a door on your on the front or rear, uh, fan information, you know, information about your power subsystems, how it actually ties back into Redfish. Have you guys worked on that at all? And no, not on not, not in our team. Yeah, not, yeah, not okay. that much. Yeah. Anyone else? No. All right then. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you.